Hi everyone, we are live on the OWASP Bangalore uh, YouTube channel and today have, we have Ritesh and he's going to talk about intro to cyber reconnaissance. This is his first YouTube live talk. So I will let him speak. Uh, so Ritesh, you talk about yourself, that uh, what do you do? And then we'll move ahead with the talk. So over to you, sure. Ritesh. Uh, thank you, Vanila. So uh, I'm Ritesh. I'm currently working as a software engineer at Cyber. So yes, I'm uh, like uh, I've been uh, liking and enthusiastic in cybersecurity for since a couple of years. So uh, this is my online, first online event. So I will directly like to start with the session itself. So yeah. Uh, so I'll start the session. Uh, let me share my screen first. <coughs> So, uh, okay. Yeah. So, it's visible. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, it, it, it's visible, right? Uh, that's the issue. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's visible. Go on. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, that was about me. So, uh, basically, uh, today's topic will be uh, introduction to cyber reconnaissance. So, reconnaissance is basically first uh, phase of any attack. So. Uh, I'll jump a bit ahead. So let's say we have to plan an attack, any attack kind of something. Then uh, for a second, let's leave behind the cyber security. Uh, like let's not talk in the cyber space, but let's say if we have to talk about in the real world. So uh, if we have to attack anything in the real world, how we can plan any attack. So there are certain categories or certain stages of uh, any attack. So let's say, uh, so if we take up, take the example of any banks, because it's one of the resource thing that or treasure that uh, someone would have the intention or would see if uh, it can be attacked because of the money. So let's say if someone wants to attack any bank or any of such financial institution. So how would he, what uh, he or she would be planning for that, or what would be the planning phases? So there are certain phases in which the planning could be done. So first is reconnaissance. Second is weaponization, then delivery, exploitation, installation, command and control, and actions of objective. So let's um, try, try to create a hypothetical uh, scenario or situation in which how it could be done. So reconnaissance, so let's say if someone have to try to attack any of the financial institution, like not, for, uh, not from the cyber world, but at the real world. So uh, the, the first objective will be to try to gather as much information as possible about the financial institution. Like uh, from the real world, we can take the example of how many guards are there in the building. If, we are, if someone is trying to attack any building, so how many buildings are there? How many security cameras? Uh, what is the best possible ways for uh, getting into the way and how it could be done? So uh, reconnaissance is trying like gathering as much information as possible about the target, like whatever we want to do. Then the weaponization. So uh, once someone gathers information about uh, the target, so the next information about weaponization that which weapon should I use for uh, doing the exploit? So let's say in the reconnaissance, we found that uh, the, let's say if it is uh, a building, let's say any building. So uh, we somehow from the reconnaissance, we found that the, uh, the there is a front gate and rear gate. So rear uh, gate is a little bit weaker than the front gate because of the and its front gate has high security. So what we'll do is we'll prepare a, a specific weapon for how we could break into the rear gate. So um, we found that, okay, rear gate was uh, on the weaker side. Now we would get the weapon, like could be a hammer, like hard hitting hammer. Then we want to deliver it, deliver, because right now we have got the weapon from a, a, any of the shop, but it has to be delivered or like to be presented at the uh, building because if weapon is at the user's place, it has of no use. It has to be de delivered to perform the exploitation. Now the next would be the exploitation. It means in, in the real world, it could be like hitting the gate with the hammer. So it's like exploiting the vulnerability because the gate was weaker. So it could be uh, done, it could be damaged or like could be open via the weapon that has been created. Now the installation. Installation means that once the vulnerability exploited, now to perform your objective, any auxiliary tools or services that you want to install on the building, let's say if you have to prepare any bag or some kind of 
uh, tools through which you can, or let's say a vehicle, so which you can get the uh, money out of the bank or any of the building. And then the command and control objective, which it means that uh, you are controlling the vault or the premises there. And then you can, uh, the next phase comes is that you, what action you want to perform because uh, the action could be different. What's your motive? So um, like before reconnaissance, it comes to the objective, what you want to come to the bank, uh, it comes uh, what, with the attack. It could be possible that the, getting the money out of the bank is not the objective, but destroying the money could be. So it's the like uh, objective that defines all the structure. So yeah, uh, these are kind of a phases that defines if uh, any attack, uh, if someone has to attack anything, so this is how it could be done. Now let's talk about reconnaissance because uh, like reconnaissance is the first step in any of the attack. So uh, what reconnaissance means is that gather as much information about the target and available assets. Let's say you want to target the bank, but you found it was the attack, you found out that the vault itself is not present in the bank. Like, you have to first gather the information that whether the asset, assets are there or not. So uh, uh, gathering the information about the targets as well as the assets. Goal is to find the weak points. What are the weak points so you can exploit it and get into the uh, deep get more into it so and deploy of defense uh, deploy defense systems like it could be how many guards are there or is there any uh, id guard checking or not uh, on the premises or not so these are kind of examples so uh, if i talk about a different scenario let's if i talk about sports so uh, what we can do is that uh, let's say a baller is sending a uh, uh, balling to a batsman so if he has gathered the information that the batsman could not handle a short ball so it's like uh, uh, he has gathered the information about it and he could use it against the batsman to get him out. So uh, that's one of the inf uh, like uh, objective of reconnaissance to gather information and then present it uh, for the, and then use that information for the next phase. Now the reconnaissance types. So there are certain types of reconnaissance like uh, first is active phase, uh, active reconnaissance and other is passive reconnaissance. Active reconnaissance means that you are engaging with the target itself like so engaging with the target and trying to gather information from it. So let's say it could be possible that you yourself uh, getting into the bank and trying to see how many you know, cameras are there or something related to that, which could get you in uh, the further exploitation. Passive means you are not directly interacting with the target itself. You are like, let's say if there is any security firm who is doing the dealing with the bank and you are trying to gather information from the passive so that uh, from one of the guard you are trying to see, although it could be like, uh, it, it's not the example of passive because you are indirectly like talking to the bank scenario itself, but let's say from the outside world, you are uh, like just standing outside for a little bit towards that and you are trying to get the information, it means you are not directly interacting with the bank premises and get, getting the information from it. So that's, the, that's called as passive reconnaissance times. Uh, yeah. So uh, since we have gathered the information about like what could be the active, uh, like what could be the reconnaissance in the real world. So uh, let's come to the cyber world now that how the reconnaissance looks like in a cyber world. So in the cyber world, like let me go a little bit back. So let's keep the same scenario, the, any of the financial institution, bank or similar uh, entity, but instead of real world, we change it to the cyber world. So cyber world in the sense that now instead of the physical world, it has changed to your net banking or any of your the servers. So the first step will be, uh, let me get back to the attack phases. Yeah. So now you have to deal with the cyber uh, thing, like uh, you have to attack any uh, bank digital or any of the such institutions. So the planning would be like gathering the information about the servers, where are the servers, for, uh, what type of different utilities or the OSs they are using. So gathering information about the assets available there in the reconnaissance phase, trying to find the uh, defense systems that are deployed, maybe any intrusion detection system, any other firewall, what is happening, so that will come in the, the reconnaissance. If we talk about weaponization, then weaponization means you know that there is some vulnerability present on the server. So you create a malware or any of such strip to exploit that vulnerability. 
Then it comes to delivery. In delivery, what you do is you are trying to get that because now the script or malware is present in your system because you have prepared it, but it is not yet delivered to the servers. So delivery means you are trying to get that particular malware to the servers, and then once it is delivered, then exploit the vulnerability because it is yet delivered, but uh, it has not performed any action. So after that, you try to get the vulnerability and perform that any of the specific action you want to perform. And then installation. Installation means now malware has done its job. It has exploited the vulnerability. And you want to install because uh, install any of the software or any of the auxiliary utilities for the final objective. So you do any installation uh, installations on the servers. Then command and control means now you are owning the server services and all, and you can do perform the next phase, which is actions of objectives. It depends like how at what at uh, what all the things you are have command, and then based on that you can do whatever objectives you have in mind. So that's how in the real world it could work. So in um, cyber world, the there are. Again, the same reconnaissance type could be there, active and passive. So let's say if I, if we talk about different techniques that could be used for reconnaissance, so it could be like different techniques could be address sweep. So what happens in address sweep is you are trying to find the range of networks, so just scanning the over the net and trying to find what all addresses are available with the net and get just sweeping the all address range of a particular uh, range. So that's the address, trying to find the information for it. And once you find the range, then uh, you're finding what all services are running on that range or any of the servers. Port scanning. So given any server, you want to know that what services are running on which port, which ports are open to all, and which ports could be vulnerable. And once we find that which could, service could be running, we, find, we can find the vulnerability present on the particular port. Or on the service. So, like service fingerprinting is again one of the objectives for which you want to get the, you want to do the reconnaissance because if you know that, okay, SSH 2.x, let's just give it a random version number, but it has the vulnerability Y. So, you can know that, okay, uh, this particular server has running SSH 2.x, which has this vulnerability. So, you could create a malware or use that malware for your objective. OS discovery. So OS discovery is other thing which could help in the further exploitation. It means like uh, which kind of OS it is running, Windows, as uh, uh, Windows, Linux, or uh, which flavor of Linux it was using. So it could be a different uh, utility that could be used. Then directory scan. Directory scans means so you are iterating through the directories and finding for any of the useful information that could be possible. So. Uh, directory scan is scanning through all the directories and trying to find the information. So robots.txt, basically robots.txt is, uh, I would say, one of the uh, critical information piece where generally uh, we try to restrict that uh, the search engine should not crawl this particular URLs. So if this, they do not want search engines, like any of the web application scenario, if uh, robots, in case of robots.txt, so if someone doesn't want to uh, let trawlers uh, crawl that particular URL, so it could be a legitimate one, or sometimes it, it is happening that people uh, try to get it, the admin URLs, what are the admin side URLs into the robots.txt. So that's what the, uh, like any of the attacker wants, that, okay, these are the admin URLs, so I know that uh, once it is exploited, so I would get the multiple sources or multiple details from there because it's the admin uh, so if it is cracked so user could have the admin privileges directly then it's come to the social engineering so tell you know, what has happened is that we have talked mostly about uh, the machine exploitation but it is also said that well uh, humans are equally or i would say more vulnerable than machines so we will come to know and see how the social engineering could work and you can get the reconnaissance or not even reconnaissance. You, you, it could be used for exploitation phase also. So from the social engineering itself, you can get the information or maybe alter the information from any of the admin account or so on. 
The next is DNS recon. So you can find out that this particular DNS details from different services. We will talk about it uh, in a later phase, is it? Uh, how we can do the reconnaissance and all the things. Then we can, once we know, okay, through the service fingerprinting that uh, these are the services running. So the next would be that how we know about different services, like if there is any web app running. So uh, I can give an example of, let's say, if, uh, we've come to know that Django is running on this particular server. So Django is basically one of the Python web framework. So let's say Django service is running on this for this particular server. So we know that uh, Django 1.x version is vulnerable. So uh, we can do multiple recon about the service that, okay, this, because you directly won't know that, okay, Django 1.x is vulnerable. But now you have narrowed your search and now trying to find information about the Django specific things. So you can know, okay, Django has this particular vulnerability and if the user is using a functionality one, well, so it could be, uh, you, it could be exploited further. So that's the uh, vulnerable specific to the services. And then there are multiple techniques that could be used for reconnaissance. Like uh, there are multiple more techniques, but given the interest of time, we would be covering only a few of them. Okay, so till now we have talked about, okay, what is reconnaissance, how it is, could be used in attack phases and all the things, but how is it performed? And uh, just to mention, like, it is not at the attacker side that it is useful. It, it is at the defense side, I would say equally useful or more useful because the moment you know that these are the ways which you attacker can use, so you can use your preventive measures against those uh, techniques. So defense, so, uh, like uh, in the, if you have uh, all the reconnaissance in place, you can have the uh, team there and then uh, you can simulate the same scenario. So this is how it would be useful for the defense side also, because unless you don't know how the attack would happen, you won't be getting, uh, or like you can defend from it. So the moment you expose us to more scenarios, the more it would be useful for us. So we would be using the uh, Python programming language for the further uh, demo and all, and see how other how we could use it. So the uh, we to know how it could be used, we have to first get into the one of the building block of networking, like how it could be used, and uh, in then so it could be used for creating exploits or uh, finding the reconnaissance methods. So socket is basically like uh, a way in which you, uh, or we can say an endpoint, it, which could be used to communicate between two processes. It could be on the same server or it could be on different servers. So let's say if I want to talk to, uh, when I say type www.osp.org. So we are, I'm talking, my system is talking to the OS server. So there, an OS server, it could be a different service running, let's say. Apache is running. So I have to talk to Apache server and my system needs to talk to it. So the, the, I have to use a certain type of socket to talk to the uh, OSPer.org Apache server. So the, uh, a socket could be used for in exchanging the information. So in Python, let's say if we have to create any socket, so what we need to do is, so there is a socket library that is being provided by Python. So we could uh, use that. And then what we can do is that uh, the, this statement is useful that it creates socket. So uh, if I uh, talk about these two particular parameters, so socket dot if I net if I net it defines the address family that is to be used when I connect to the server. So if I net is, uh, is like uh, for IPv4 addressing. There could be different type of sockets that you want to use, like uh, AF underscore Unix for Unix type of sockets, and uh, AF underscore INET6 for IPv6 ranges, etc. And then we have socket dot socket stream. So it defines that which, again, the type of socket. So it is like whether you want a TCP socket to be created, a uh, socket to be created, or the UDP packet, your UDP socket, so that you will transfer the UDP packet. So, this is a simplest statement through which you can create a communication between two sockets. Uh, let me just go to a demo. So I'll just go to message screen. Uh, let me see if I 
So here, let's say, uh, I'll just go to um, Yeah, so uh, in the example, we talked about it, how we can create a socket directly. So in the slides, if you have seen that we have used, so here, what we have used is a uh, socket wrapper just uh, over, a Python wrapper over it so that we could use it for multiple scenarios. So this is a class in Python. This is like the class uh, syntax which you could be used. And I have inherited from the object class, which is the base class of Python. And I have created a constructor which takes server and port in uh, the input parameters or, or I would say arguments. And then uh, it just checks the, uh, sets it into the server and port class instance variable. And then there is a function that I have defined, which if I pass any data, so data is basically on which port or which server and what data you want to pass. So this is this particular server and port we have already defined. So first we will connect to that server. So this is the statement to which we can try to connect to the server. So first statement is creating a socket. The next statement is connecting to the server. So this is how we can create connect to the server. And then uh, it is uh, like I would say the uh, specification that uh, there should be a line of uh, at the end for uh, any communication. So that's uh, I'm doing slash r slash n. And then send the data. Data is uh, imported so that it, it returns a byte object. So it's like uh, towards more towards Python specification how the data needs to be sent. And uh, this message variable I'm initializing to null. So this message variable will primarily will be storing the response of it. So let's say um, for re receiving the response, so at this statement, the data is sent. Now, if I have to receive a response, so uh, the re return data, I would say uh, it is say as dot receive, and it says 50,000 bytes I want to return. So uh, we are receiving the data in chunk of bytes, so uh, all in chunk of 50K. So if uh, all the data is received, so return data will be null, and I'll be breaking from this statement. And again, it's a byte type object, which is Python specification. So I just encode it to be a UTF encoding, and then message will be printed. So let's see how it could be used. So I have a HTTP GET request. So generally, like uh, it is, uh, this socket is not specifically for HTTP GET request or uh, other things. If the socket is we are trying to communicate between uh, two services or two processes as we discussed earlier. So it is not specifically to uh, any of the HTTP, but let's see since uh, there is, uh, we generally do more interaction to HTTP. So how? it's a, whenever we type to www. Uh, let's say google.com or else.org, what actually happens? So here uh, in, uh, of the class, let's see. <clears throat> so this is the socket wrapper that we have created earlier. So I just imported in uh, in my utility here uh, the script. And what I want to do is uh, I'm just mentioning that I want to get the call. So this is the HTTP specification that how we want to get any data. So uh, get request to the root, and then it's on one twenty seven zero 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 one. So uh, and then we are printing the response. So let's see how it could be used. So let's say I type Python. Uh, okay, first I have to. So now it has listed to me uh, all the directories that are that was there in the particular. Uh, so how it uh, got me is. I, I'm running a HTTP server here, so I'll just stop it. So this is so this is simple uh, HTTP dot server on Python uh, 9001 using a Python module. So it is starting on 9001 module, and I'm just getting the information from here. So here. 
we have just written that uh, local host 9000 one so it is getting me the information that uh, how it could be useful so like this is how uh, i'm using it uh, okay so the next uh, step let me see let's move to our slides So we have found got like how we can do a HTTP GET call using a Python socket. So now, because it's the one of the building block of getting the HTTP request. Because if you know need to do any reconnaissance, this is the building block for at least for web application that you would be doing. Because if you can send a request, then you can pass the response in your respective format. Also, there are certain tools available, <coughs> which creates a wrapper over it and. And you need not to write much of the code here, but uh, it, it's good to know that you know the building block of it so that in any case a customization is required, you are not relying on any of the two. Uh, next is port scanner. So I'll show my terminal again. So now here, if you can see that uh, uh, we have our file, which is portscanner.py. So now here in this file, the objective of portscanner, as we discussed earlier, is to find out which ports are open, closed, and then uh, on the open ports, we can find out the details at which service is running, and then we can go deep into the services that which version of the service is running and finding more details of it. So now we would be using our same socket, uh, socket functionality for doing the port scanning also. So I have created a main function here. So here, what we can do is, we can provide the IP and range of port, like range of port is uh, what, it could be used for what it could be used for. So here, what uh, if I have default provided a default range of one two one zero two four, and then here uh, it is doing that since it's a string. So I need to map it to the integer that uh, what's the port range we have to get. And then for each of the port, we are trying to create a TCP socket. Once the TCP socket is there, uh, we are just trying to connect to that. So this particular script is restricting to uh, whether a TCP port is open or not. And then we are finding this information and getting it. Uh, let's first. Ritesh, to, yeah. Uh, people cannot see your terminal. I think you need to go out of the presentation mode because only the presentation is visible. Not the screen, not the terminal. Okay. Uh, it, is it visible now? Two minutes, let me check. Yes, it's visible. Can we zoom it a bit? Yeah, sure. Sure. Uh, is it fine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine. It people can see it now. Okay, sure. Okay, uh, just a second. Sure. Yeah. So. Uh, so uh, was it the uh, after the particular session the terminal was not visible or the get request one was also not visible? Uh, let me just see. I think okay. it was not zoom. That's why they they were like very small. So. Okay, sure. So let's start. Uh, let's go ahead with the boot scanner function. Yeah. So what I would suggest is like uh, let's uh, run this port scanner. So. Uh, we'll just try port scanner on the local host, and since we know that on 9001 uh, our HTTP server is running, so what we can do is 899 and then let's say 9005. 
So now here we can see that on 9001, the uh, port is uh, the, uh, open and again, on uh, other, po other ports are closed. So this is how it could be used. So uh, let's see uh, other services like uh, uh, 3300 to 3310. So now we know that uh, 3306 is the general service where our MySQL service is running. So the general port where our MySQL port is running. So on my local machine, MySQL is running on 3306. So we can find out that, uh, okay, this port is uh, open. Now let's go to port scanner again and see how it works. So uh, this is the Python specification that if uh, name equals to main, it means I'm running the file directory uh, directly here so uh, it will ask if the argument provided is less than two then it will mention that invalid argument just a smaller sanity check and the default port range is one two one zero two four and if the length is three then we are using like uh, if the port range is provided then we are using the port range otherwise not so this is a simpler port scanner that can detect like whether the uh, tcp port is open or not so the, uh, this is again uh, like uh, we will talk about different tools that uh, checks mul using multiple techniques. It could provide more details, robust details. But uh, once we know the basics of the building blocks, it could help us in customizing our uh, functionality based on our needs. So yeah. The next thing uh, we can go ahead with is like uh, I'll not move towards uh, the presentation again because like, again uh, it could be some termination. So uh, let's talk about uh, different ways which we could use for reconnaissance. So again, other is who is service. So who is basically a lookup service that is provides the details of the domain registrar and other details that uh, who the person who has registered it, etc. So let's try to first run the who is service. Then we'll see how it is working. So let's say this package. So now we can get the information that what's the register domain ID, updated date, creation date, and few of the information when it is expiring, etc. And most of the uh, services, like uh, this services, uh, mask the email IDs uh, so that. The user's email ID is now exposed. What is the name server that is being used? Where the registrar is, etc. So this who is detail. Uh, this, this you can get it from the who is details. So uh, let's see how the who is functionality looks like. So now here uh, it is uh, the smaller functionality again, uh, where we have used the socket wrap. So this is the. Uh, same uh, socket wrapper that we have used in our get request for application get request. And uh, here we can see that uh, yeah, just do it there. Okay. Uh, just a second. Yeah. So now uh, in this, uh, what we have done is uh, we have defined a domain that we could use. Uh, for the input for which we want to get the information. And there are certain who is servers. So not a single server gets the information that, okay, I'll give the domain, I'll give, give the details of all the domains around. So there are certain domains which have, uh, which Aina has delegated the responsibility that you will get the who is details from this particular server, or you will maintain it for this particular domain. So if we talk about so this particular URL has list of all the uh, who is servers that are present, and I was just talking uh, uh, checking earlier. So who is dot verisign dot grs dot com is responsible for the dot com domain, and uh, this who is dot pir dot org is responsible for all the org domains. So let's say if I just uncomment it and use domain and just comment it. So, and then we can run it again. So we get information about the Google domain that when it was registered, when it is expiring and all such details. So there are different servers. So let's say if I do 
or the same thing points dot to rg so it will mention that no record was match for os dot org uh, the registry domains contains only dot com dot net dot edu domains for the registry so uh, this is how it is used that uh, and it, uh, here as i was explaining earlier that once we have created our socket wrapper functionality it is not like it would be used only for uh, http get request it is it, it's a wrapper it's a socket wrapper it could be used for sending and getting data for any of the servers so uh, here the socket wrapper i have just provided the domain server because uh, i think while developing i have just provided the port 43 by default so which is like for the who service so uh, i need not to provide the port number here itself okay so this is how it could be used who is service and then let's say if i have to move towards a different service so let's say nmap okay let's first see what does nmap can do so uh, nmap is like uh, a utility uh, i think i would say well known utility because it uh, it's known for like network mapper it could it has so whatever tools or tech, uh, like techniques we have seen in our get request port scanning and who is uh, it could use like uh, i don't think i'm not sure about this but uh, the other services like uh, os discovery service fingerprinting uh, net port scanning address sweep all this could be used by the network mappers or uh, i would say nmap functionality so let's try running on my system once so for now for the simplicity uh, while running it i uh, have just found like we just uh, not passing not made the script to take the argument it is just running on my local machine so on my local machine it is scanning through each port uh, or i'll in the example like once this script is there uh, we'll come to details like how or what are details it can get us and what are the different arguments it could be passed so if i talk specifically about nmap it's like uh, there are like different kind of books written for using this nmap so uh, it has it, it, it uh, this tool has wide variety of usage as well as the configuration parameters so uh, in the meanwhile it is getting us the details let me share my screen on uh, the other screen and we can see what all the parameters generally allow to it so i'll just move to this one again so uh, i just tried uh, nmap cheat sheet okay just to see. so this, this is just uh, like i uh, google like what is the nmap cheat sheet look like like what are the parameters that are defined and all the details about it so there are different options available let's say this is nmap so this is so nmap command is uh, available like you can use it in any of your mac linux systems that is available so uh, for a scan for a single ip for a specific ip exclude the ips scan random posts uh, other details look like if so there are different techniques you could be using so one is like uh, tcp saying uh, other is like udp port scan tcp act so uh, what kind of techniques you want to use or uh, for scanning so it, it could be possible that you are just listing the targets and all the things like never do dns resolution so uh, one of the issues that like it could be overwhelming that okay i have a tool and let's use it like let's try to use all the functionality so there is one parameter hyphen a which is like which could be used for os detection and multiple things like for version detection script scanning and it it would it would use its own scripts and different kind of functionality for getting as much information as possible but what happens is that if you are trying to do so many things in a shorter span of time 
then it creates a lot of noise into the system or the network. So any of the intrusion detection system that is being there or firewall will detect it. Okay, there is some unusual activity or anomaly happening in the network, which is not because uh, it, it would use different escapes, different ports in a short span of time. So there are again the configuration items present that in which how much time you want to present perform the end web scan and all the things. So let's move to uh, back to our terminal and see whether we get the scan details or not. So let me share my terminal again. So here, if you can see that NMAP has given the scan details that what are these scans possible. So it has, so this is my script in which it is uh, written there. And it has given the details of all the ports. So what all ports are available. So 8080, my front end node J server is running, 9001, our HTTP server is running, 9200, Elastic Search is running. So it gets all the details about it. So uh, what all details, so uh, which version it is using. And here we can see that Elastic Search is the cluster name. So oh, although we know that 9200 on this server, uh, Elastic Search is running, but it has given the, all the script present and how it could be used. So yeah, th th this is the functionality. So let's get into, into the script, how the scripts look like. So here again, uh, Python provides its own NMAP package utility that could be used. So, uh, but uh, the NMAP system package needs to be installed before using this Python package. So basically this package is just a wrapper over the NMAP command. So it parses the details of all the NMAP command and it could be so that it could be used in a uh, well defined format. So this is how it could be used. So first step is like which host we need to define. Again, for the simplicity, I have used the local host to our transmission 001 here. Then I have created a port scanner here, which could be used. Uh, then NMAP scan is there. So here we have uh, provided the arguments hyphen A. And hyphen A is responsible as uh, we have seen that uh, hyphen A could be for different purpose like trace route, service string, fingerprinting, OS detection, etc. Then here is the check the host state whether the host is up or not. So here, the, so nmap commands also provides that if the host is up or not, and we are using the nmap Python package, so we are just providing the state of it whether the host is up or not. Then we can get all the open ports of it that uh, on the particular host, so which are the open TCP ports available. And then here is the one of the cheat sheet that you could uh, have all the examples that what could be used for NMAP and what all the functionality it is. And then what we have is that we have a post scanner where we can provide details about uh, on this host, this port, and what is the value it is provided. So here, if you have seen, Okay. So here uh, it, it has providing the details of the port that what was the detail of the port. So we have just printing the different uh, value of the port is this one and then we can perform our activity. So, and then again, the uh, same usage that if I'm running the file directly, uh, then you execute the main function. The main function is executing it here. We are, we are using the host is this one and then it is executing the details. So, uh, so now we see, like here, uh, we do have an map Python package, uh, and map uh, apt command uh, or the what is a system package. But uh, you, this is the simple Python script which you could use for getting all the details in a parse format. So right now we are just printing the details, but later on you can pipe this detail to your further exploitation. Okay, if this is open closed, so how it could be used further on. So yes, uh, this could be useful. Uh, this simpler script could be used for we are scanning the network. Uh, okay, let's see what all details it has again. So here uh, it has mentioned that two state is up. Uh, the port that we are using is uh, it's open is this other ports and. Uh, MySQL, which MySQL version is there. So now the moment you know that this is the MySQL version installed on the machine. So you need not to do anything else. Just go 
check the particular CV ID corresponding to this version and try to build exploit on top of it. So yeah, this is. I'll just pause for a second. Yeah, some words. Yeah. So the, the, uh, what we are talking about, this is the NMAP utility that trace like a wrapper over it and could be used for multiple purposes. So uh, yeah, NMAP can do multiple things. Uh, but yeah, we have learned about the building blocks also. So let's see the other service also, how it could be used. Let's move to our presentation back. We have found the who is details here that how the who is details will look like and then we have talked about nmap also so uh, the next thing we want to talk about is social engineering so as we were talking earlier that uh, what is social engineering uh, we actually we will be discussing here that social engineering that humans are more, more vulnerable so how it how social engineering could be used for gathering the information as well as even in the exploit case. So let me see again. Uh, I'll just share. I'll just put a two minute YouTube video that could be used. So this is just a two minute video. I want, it will provide the details of what the social engineering looks like in your So I invited a few of the world's best hackers to try to hack me and show me where my vulnerabilities are. And now I'm gonna meet them in Las Vegas for DEF CON, the biggest hacker convention of the year. They're gonna hack me using social engineering, which is essentially hacking without any code. They just use a phone and an internet connection. Do you wanna do a sample of vishing call? What's vishing? Vishing is voice solicitation. And basically um, what you do is you use the phone to extract information or data points that can be used in a later attack. Let's do it. Will okay. you, who are you gonna call? Maybe I'll call your cell phone provider okay. and see if I can get them to give me your email address. I, I bet they're good. I bet they have my back. <laughs> but yeah, go go for it. I'm going to spoof from your number, so it's going to look like it's calling from you. OK. Hi. I'm actually, I'm so sorry. Can you hear me OK? I, my baby, I'm sorry. <laughs> my, <laughs> my husband's like, we're about to apply for a loan, and we just had a baby. And he's like, get this done by today. So I'm so sorry. I can't I, um, call you back. <laughs> I'm trying to log into our account for uses information, and I can't remember what email address we use to log the account. The baby's crying, and um, can, can you help me? Awesome. In just 30 seconds, at gmail .com. Jessica gets access to my personal email address. Now, if I needed to um, add our older daughter on our account so she could call in and make changes, how would I need to go about doing that? You would have to send me a secure pin through a text message? Yeah, well, the thing is, I don't think I'll be able to receive a text message if I'm on the phone. Shh, shh. Oh, I'm not on there either? I, so I thought when we got married, um, he added me to the account. Jess uses my girlfriend's name and a fake social security number. 5127. To set up her own personal access to my account. Wait, I'm sorry, so there's no password on my account right now? Can I set that up? She even gets the support person to change my password. Thank you so much for your help today. So she just basically blocked me out of my own account. I'll get her fed after this. <laughs> All right, thank you. Holy shit. So they they just gave they just gave you access to my entire cell phone account. You're gonna have to go on and change your password now because it's Jess, my name. And all it took was a crying baby and a phone call. Yes. So uh, in this example, we have seen like uh, just by a little deception, we like uh, uh, social engineer or the using the social engineering technique. Someone can get the information or even the alter the password. So it's not in the reconnaissance phase of uh, 
phase now. It's in the exploitation phase because someone has done the exploitation and uh, maybe towards the last phase it, is, it has moved to the uh, objective, like it has completed its objective. So this is how the detail could be. So yeah, uh, moving next. So uh, we can see how the things work and uh, let's see, we have seen different kind of things that is possible using reconnaissance. So uh, this, uh, let's move to the defense steps now, that like what could be the defense steps that could be used. So, so here are different type of methods, what, what we can do with this defense steps. Let me go to the presentation mode. <clears throat> Sorry. So uh, one step is the port hardening. Uh, what this port hardening means is that uh, the, for the ports, uh, it's not open for everyone. The port are hardened for the specific machines. So specific machines are being, uh, only specific machines can call the ports of other machines. So uh, let's say if, the, uh, if I, I have an architecture where uh, a load balancer or a web server, only one of the machines should talk to my DB server. So the port will be open for only those two to five servers which are in the in the particular group. So that uh, other server, let's say the service which runs the front end code doesn't require to talk to my DT, DB. So even if someone gets to access of my server or like one of my front end server, uh, it, it could not be used to get the information from, or it could not traverse my network to get the information from my SQL machine. So SQL, or I would say my database machine. So this is the port hardening where we say that uh, uh, only the certain type of port should be available from a particular other server. So other thing is that uh, what we can do is uh, generally a different type of OS platform provide different services. A port hardening is generally being used, uh, being done using IP tables rules. So IP tables rules provides that functionality that you can restrict the usage of any other port from the machines and services, etc. Setup of DMZ and internal network. So in the case, what happens is that uh, there are certain services which require DNA internet services means as the inbound call that the internet will be hitting that particular server. So those we can do it in a DMZ zone, demilitarized zone, where uh, it is open to world and anyone can hit those servers. Let's say in any, if I have to reach a server of www, when I attack www.google.com, so I have to reach to the uh, Google web server or let's say load balance or whatever the technology is used, but it has to be open to work. But it's the, uh, like a, a, for any service, any platform's database server, nobody want, needs to uh, talk or uh, interact with the database server of the, at the open world because it's the app server responsibility to get the details from the database server. So what we can do is we can put it, the database server in the internal network so that it's not open to the world. So the network, so if we do the address feed uh, on the network or the port scanning, so the address space of that particular database server will not be available for the open world. So you have to first mo move it in the uh, particular network which has access to the database server. Otherwise you cannot move directly or interact directly with the database server. So this is how we can minimize the risk of at least uh, like directly reconnaissance as well as different kind of exploits. And uh, the other thing is put dev and test environment machines behind the proxy server. So what generally happens is that our dev servers or the test environments are less secure. So uh, less secure as compared to our production server because production server have different kind of audits to be any code that has been pushed to the production. It has to be first approved by different audit policies and different things in a, in a general cyber security or any financial institution where the security or the asset is critical. So uh, for the production system, those many of those things happen. But for the dev and test environment, it doesn't happen. But uh, if the your dev and test environment are in the same network of your production, so the moment someone hits uh, compromise your dev server, your uh, internal route to production server is open. So that's what like what we uh, it generally do is that you can do it in a behind a proxy server or like a VPN so that. Uh, because no larger audience required to access your test or production environment. So the moment uh, 
uh, whosoever is required, uh, if it is required be after at the internet, so it should be behind the proxy server or in other terms we say like other network VPN or uh, a, a jump post or a bastion server, where first you have to log into the uh, server or it has to be tunneled from that server. So this is how it could, you could protect from uh, your environment. And it's about phishing and social engineering attack. As we have seen that uh, the social engineering could be very well useful for gathering the information. And like here uh, in the video, we have seen it as an exploit also, but uh, social engineering we could use, uh, like we can gather a huge amount of data, the uh, top executives, CIOs, details could be possible. Like you just have to craft it a uh, uh, well-defined email. So like the, uh, or the social engineering area in the, like through the phishing email, if we talk about, so if we do a targeted phishing, which is like spear phishing. So in this, uh, to any employee, if we send the details of, uh, with a mail concerning their account, uh, let's say uh, salary details or something that the, if the mail is coming from any of the top executives, so, uh, it has to be, uh, they will most likely open it. So if they are aware that such campaigns happen and uh, if they are more aware about it, uh, such kind of reconnaissance or such kind of attacks would be stopped. Uh, other thing is that you should recon yourself before someone else do it. So uh, it is like our red teaming uh, could be there. So uh, the threat enters and uh, your internal teams, which is which plays the role of attacker, yeah, so that you can defense your systems, your services, your platform on the basis of it, so that uh, no one else required to attack it and uh, generally it would happen. So yes, you should do uh, uh, record yourself be before performing anything else. So yeah, uh, I think that's it from my side. I'm open for questions uh, uh, now, yeah. Uh, yes, so let me yeah, see. Rish, one minute, let me take up the questions to you. So, um, there was one question that uh, the person was not able to carry out the reconnaissance using social mapper tool. Uh, I wasn't able to find the releases file for Geeko driver. Can you show a practical of on a social mapper? Do you have it available for today or shall we show it in the next section? Uh, sorry, which file uh, he's talking about? Um, release files for a uh, geeko driver from social mapper tool social mapper tool uh, i think we have not covered it social mapper right now so uh, maybe we uh, i can uh, add the comments in the uh, uh, youtube section later on once uh, like uh, how what's the issue and i can post the solution in the comments here sure ritesh i think that was the only question uh, we have for today and uh, can you share your details where people can reach you? Yeah, sure. So you can stop the sharing or you can just type it here itself. Yeah, so uh, so you can reach out to me at my email address, udr.chitrasher.com or uh, let me just... So uh, on the slides, I have my LinkedIn ID also. So like, feel free to connect me or uh, send a message or over my LinkedIn ID. Sure. Thank you so much, Ritesh. Uh, uh, we're going to close the live chat now. Yeah. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to Ritesh. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you.